Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to have a look at that electrode water heater again. As in the previous video, there were certain things that we could have done, and several people pointed out that uh, things like the voltage and current could have been measured at the same time, and uh, there's other things. So uh, let's uh, have a look at that uh, this time. And another thing which was mentioned on one of the comments was that uh, these lights here seemed rather close to a plastic jug on the other side. Well, they probably are, but uh, these are actually LED, so there's really no heat coming out of that whatsoever. Only 5 watts there, so uh, not a problem of setting the place on fire. So anyway, let's just get to the uh, setup and see what can go on with that. So here's today's setup. Uh, fairly similar to what we had before. The difference is we've got the meter here for voltage and then another one here for current. So we can basically do both at the same time. And we're going to start off with the probe here, which has the small area. It's the same one that we used previously. So obviously uh, we should get similar results. And I've put new water in here, so this is brand new sort of clean water. And I have actually also cleaned the plates there, so that uh, if anything goes brown in the water this time, it is definitely coming off of the plates. It's not some sort of residue or oil or whatever that may have been left there. And uh, we're going to try it first of all without the lamp in the circuit. So of course the current will be zero, but we can still measure the voltage effectively between the probe and what would be the ground. Although it's not really the ground here because this is running from an isolation transformer. But of course it will be much safer that way. And as before, we'll see the power on the display here in the middle. So let's uh, turn on and see what we get. So things heating up there, as we'd expect. Uh, power here is in the region of 560 odd watts, and this will vary a bit because, of course, uh, as the water heats and the metal particles leach out of the plates, the conductivity will change. So uh, no current or voltage. So if we take the probe then, place it in the water, and we should see a voltage there. So we're getting about 79 volts there, fairly similar to what we had before. So as we moved about, as you can see, the different uh, voltages can be had. So in the region, sort of uh, 79, 80 odd volts there. Maybe a bit higher if we put it right in the middle. Yeah, sort of 85 odd there we can get. So uh, nothing uh, too surprising with that. So we've put the uh, filament lamp in again. This is that 40 watt job we had before. So that can go into the circuit. And now we can see the voltage and the current at the same time. So again, with the same with a small probe, place that in. So as we had before, we're getting in the region of 70 milliamps there. But notice that the voltage has dropped considerably. That's only in the region of sort of 35 or so. And of course, that's because the uh, loader lamp is basically dragging the voltage down. So uh, that's uh, what we're getting with those. And again, if we go into the middle there, it obviously will vary. So getting about 40 volts there or so. a bit less around the edges and so on, but we're still getting that sort of 70 milliamps or so because because the voltage is quite low, the lamp isn't exactly uh, glowing hugely brightly or at all. So I'll just uh, remove that from there. Now, of course, this probe has a small area, as uh, several people did point out, but uh, all we can actually do is this red covering can actually be removed. So now I have a much larger surface area of the probe. As you can see, that's a good sort of uh, two inches or three inches in length there. So same again as before, lamp still in the circuit there. And let's see what we get this time. So heating up as before, you notice the water is going that sort of uh, browny shade already. So it's definitely leaching goodness knows what out of the metal. Power's now in the region of 600 watts. So this is with the full length probe. And we can see that now the voltage has increased to about 78 again. The lamp is now visibly glowing. Uh, moderately brightly, current in the region of 94 milliamps, so uh, again, as we move around we can get various different uh, readings there, so what, 80 odd volts there, 90 odd milliamps, so on this side it's actually a bit higher, so in the region of 100 milliamps there, and uh, depending on where we place it we can get in the region of 100 volts as we move around. And you see the lamp is glowing uh, reasonably brightly, in fact this does vary a bit of course depending on exactly where the thing goes. And that's basically uh, a that flash there is when it contacted the plate directly. That's why we have the lamp in series because uh, if that wasn't there that would have blown the fuse by now. So as you can see the uh, surface area of the probe does make a difference but it's mainly to the voltage we're getting. The actual current of course is uh, not hugely different. So see that it's reliably uh, doing the actual illumination quite well there. Just take away the lamp here, 
that is notably warm by the way, it's not sort of blazing hot, but uh, again with that lamp and circuit, and again with the probe in there, again we're getting that 100 odd volts again, 110 maybe as we're putting it in different areas. So uh, that's basically with the two in and out of there. Just turn that off so we don't overload the equipment. Now another comment we've made was, uh, what happens if we put an LED lamp in there? Well, here we have an LED lamp. This is a 4.3 watt uh, effort, so uh, considerably less power. That's a 40, so this is about a tenth of the actual rated power. So let's just install that one. And again, we use the long probe again, because why not? So turning on the uh, power there, see what the uh, power actually is now. It's in the region of sort of 640, 650 watts there. And it is slowly increasing, probably due to the things leaching out into the water. So we're placing the probe this time. And we can see that we're still getting 100 volts there, but the current is basically zero and it's not illuminating. And of course this is because this is designed to work at 240. Unlike a filament lamp, it's not a resistive load. It's going to be one of these that requires a certain voltage to actually strike the LEDs or illuminate them. So we're not going to really anything at all there, just a tiny amount of leakage through that. But uh, really nothing to actually cause the thing to illuminate. And of course this result may well vary depending on the exact type of LED we've got. Some of course have more complicated circuitry in them than others. I don't know exactly what's inside this one. And we're not going to rip it apart to find out either. So uh, no illumination there, but say that's probably got some kind of uh, switching supply in there which only works at a certain voltage or it could say be uh, just a capacitive dropper with a whole string of LEDs in series and the voltage of 100 isn't actually sufficient to cause it to illuminate. And if we go back to our filament lamp there, and again we can see it just glowing away like that in the sort of 80 odd volts. And notice the voltage is a bit lower because again there's more load there so it's pulling voltage down from the 100 that we had a moment ago with the LED. But uh, there you go, sort of 97 milliamps at about 90 volts, a certain amount of glowing uh, inside the lamp there, so a significant uh, amount of power you can get there and if you poke your finger in there and this was not an isolated supply a fairly severe electric shock would be inevitable and even right over here at the edge of the container which is a good sort of two inches away from the device we're still getting around 80 volts and 90 milliamps and as we go into the middle so the voltage and the current increase uh, somewhat there so that's uh, pretty much uh, what we're going to be doing with that and you can see the water, as well as uh, boiling up there, has gone a rather sort of browny orange shade. So if we just uh, turn that off. And we can see here that uh, it's definitely not transparent anymore. And if I have a look inside the bottom of there, here is the actual uh, device here. And you can see inside the plates are fairly discoloured and dark in uh, colour there. And if I have a look in the water, we can see that as well as going brown, there's various particles of presumably chunks of lime scale or metal or combinations of the both have fell off and have accumulated in the bottom of the tub. So certainly wouldn't recommend drinking that. Who knows what could be in there? And as someone else pointed out, if that's any kind of stainless material, it's got chromium in it, then there's going to be some uh, chromium or hexavalent chromium in the water. That is highly toxic and is probably going to cause cancer or something. So definitely not recommended to use, even if you don't put your fingers in there. And as for people rushing to the defence of this item, as there was a couple of people, yes, in theory you can use this thing and you could put it in there, not put your fingers near it and all that bother, but uh, really, completely unnecessary. Um, we don't need items like that around here. So that's the end of today's demonstration. And as you saw there, the probe area does make a difference, uh, mainly to the voltage you're going to get, rather than the current. And so the current is going to be limited by the uh, lamp that we've got connected in there. So it certainly does make a difference, and bearing in mind if you put your finger in there, your finger is not going to have a tiny sort of 2mm point at the end of it. It's going to be quite a large object, so uh, the large probe is going to be fairly similar to if you placed your finger in there. And uh, as I said in the other video, this is running from an isolation transformer, so therefore it's uh, considerably safer than just uh, cutting it through the mains and uh, hopefully not putting your finger in it. And obviously we've done that because we don't wish to be uh, dying or being seriously injured. And the final point is that a number of other comments were about putting salt into the water and of course that will increase the conductivity considerably and therefore lead to substantially higher currents uh, flowing through there. And this device has no current limiting at all, it is just the two plates, line and neutral, stuck in the water. So basically if you stuck a screwdriver between the two for example then it would be a dead short and uh, take out the fuse. 
Now we're not going to be putting salt in this thing today because it's inside and I don't wish to destroy the place, but we will be doing that next time. So until then, thanks for watching.